Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start with the event, I would like to gently remind all of you on some housekeeping rules. Kindly make sure your microphone is on mute at all time to make sure the smooth flow of the event. For those who have stable internet connection, you are encouraged to turn on your video. This session will also be broadcast on UTLC's YouTube and Facebook Live. Thank you for your kind cooperation and attention. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi washabbihi ajmain. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning. Yang berusaha Professor Dr. Fauzia Abdul Rahim, Director of University Teaching and Learning Center UTLC, come chairperson of the 2021 edition of International University Carnival on e-learning IUCEL 2021. Yang berusaha, Professor Dr. Abdul Karim Alias, Director, Center for Development Academic Excellence, CDAE, University Science Malaysia. Participants of the 2021 edition of the International University Carnival on e-learning are you sell 2021, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the keynote speech session of the Are you sell 2021. I'm Azamarni Mohammad Noor, and it is my pleasure to be the MC for today. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin, let us make dua that all that we think, say, plan, and act during this session will be bestowed by the Almighty with bounty of Rahmat in ensuring its true success. Let us begin by reciting Ummul Kitab Al Fatiha. (laughs) 
Amin Ya Rabbal Alamin. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin, let us hear a welcoming speech from Yang Berusaha, Professor Dr. Fauzia Abdul Rahim, Director of University Teaching and Learning Center, UTLC, come Chairperson of IUCEL 2021. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and a very good day to everyone. Thank you, Madam Azam Arni Muhammad Noor, Master of the Ceremony of IUCEL 2021, honorable guests from the Ministry of Higher Education, Vice Chancellors and Deputy Vice Chancellors of Malaysian Institution of Higher Learning, who may be watching this event with fervor, Dr. Nobiha Abdul Shukur, Chairperson of the Malaysian e Learning Council for Public Universities fondly known as Mayetta, directors of centres responsible for the university teaching and learning, as well as academic excellence in institution of higher learning in Malaysia, distinguished keynote speaker, and my <laughs> other, Professor Dr. Abdul Karim Alias, who will be starting today's event, and I believe will set us in the right foot and mindset to welcome and face the challenges ahead in the dis digitalized community. As well as invited speaker from Open Learning, Mr. Chandru Balakrishnan, who will be conducting an exciting yet relevant workshop later. Sponsors, whose support and presence have been pertinent in this event, the esteemed delegates of the IUCEL 2021, who have been patient, assertive, and persevered during the last two days of this virtual carnival, and the participants who have joined us in this virtual gathering. And of course, my committed team, together with the previous director of UTLC, as the organizing committee, who have been working almost 24 hours every day for the last seven days in executing this daunting task. Alhamdulillah, and thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, in normal circumstances, I would be welcoming you in person with the green hospitality of Lembasinto. Nevertheless, we have all learned to adapt to the new normal, and for the first time since its inception, it is with my utmost pleasure to welcome you, albeit virtually, to the year 2021 edition of the International University Carnival on e-learning, IUCEL 2021. Truly, the theme, Leading Innovation Towards Digitalized Community, embodies this event. University of Utara Malaysia was given the responsibility to host this auspicious event that relates very well with our present situation, be it locally or globally, that compels us to place greater importance of ensuring we embrace, use, and innovate the ways of working and becoming part of the digitalized community. I hope that the sharing sessions in the carnival and takeaways we receive from the distinguished speakers will provide greater and up-to-date knowledge for all of us to benefit from and like a ripple effect will instigate change to benefit others. Like a catalyst as educators, technologists, proponents of digital communities, we play a significant role to enable our country and its people to become inclusive in achieving development, no matter who or where they are. So stay with us till the end. To all the winners, heartiest congratulations to you. And on behalf of the organizing committee, committee I would like to take this opportunity to thank again everyone involved in this event, from the ministry to the participants, from the public to the private sectors in making this event successful. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dr. Falzia. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to introduce our keynote speaker today, Professor Dr. Abdul Karim Alias, from University of Science Malaysia, USM. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Dr. Abdul Karim Alias is a professor of food technology at the School of Industrial Technology, USM, and current director of the Center for Development of Academic Excellence. 
He has been teaching at USM for over 27 years since 1994. He was the recipient of the prestigious National Academic Award in 2008 for teaching from the Ministry of Higher Education, Malaysia. He has been recognized as the top 50 educators in Asia Pacific 2015 by Terrapin Asia and has been awarded with the Malaysia's Rising Star 2015 Award, Malaysia Research Star Award in 2016, 2017, 2018 and 2019 and the world's most influential scientific minds by Clarivate Analytics. At national level, he is a master trainer for ACAPT and involved as a writer for Malaysia Education Blueprint 2015-2025 Higher Education. He led the development of Malaysia MOOC as a co-chairman of the National Technical Committee. Professor Dr. Karim is a strong advocate of leveraging the internet as an alternative medium for learning and teaching. He has developed and maintained several teaching portals, websites, online courses, and blogs related to teaching, learning, and research. As of May 7, 2021, his 392 teaching videos on YouTube channel have received more than 964,000 views no. from more than 190 countries with an estimated hour watch of 69,000 and a total of more than 5,700 subscribers. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Abdul Karim Alias, titled Micro-Credential Obstacles and Challenges of Developing Digital Community. Please welcome Professor Dr. Abdul Karim. Selamat pagi dan selamat sejahtera pada semua yang hadir dalam sesi pada pagi ini. Um, thank you to the high cell area uh, and also to Prof. Fauzia for having me. It's a great pleasure to be among the passionate educators. So I'll be sharing a topic uh, assigned to me uh, for this keynote uh, speech. Uh, let me share the screen. Can I can I get permission to scan? Oh, okay, all right. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay. Let me check. Can you can you see the the screen the PowerPoint? Napa napa apa? Okay. The audio is okay. So once again, uh, welcome to everyone, everyone to this IUCEL. So this morning, I'll be sharing this topic given uh, to me by the Secretariat Micro Credential Obstacle and Challenges of Developing Digital Community. There's a lot of uh, conversation about micro credential in the past two years. I I believe some of you or most of you, or maybe even all of you here, have heard about micro, micro credential. And uh, in this sharing session this morning, um, I'll be talking about obstacles and challenges. Uh, to me, I, I call it uh, a, double, a double jeopardy, yeah? because we are talking about obstacles and also the challenges, uh, more or less the same thing. Uh, although I would rather to talk about opportunities because um, if you understand about micro credential, I believe it is a really a game changer for education in general and also for higher education and for corporate uh, L&D, learning and development as well. And um, this is one document from um, <clears throat> a document published by, uh, it's actually a briefing paper on the uh, award recognition, portability, and accreditation of micro-credential. This uh, white paper is uh, published by the EU, my, micro -E EU. title is Challenges and Opportunities uh, of Micro-Credential in Europe. 
I would uh, recommend you to get a copy of this. You can download in the PDF uh, format because it's quite a comprehensive study looking at uh, the Important. different challenges and also opportunities of micro-credential implementa implementation in Europe. And uh, in this, in this uh, presentation, I'll be sharing about, I'll be sharing uh, six key challenges to implement micro-credentials successfully. And you will see that these six challenges exist at different levels. The first level would be the whole ecosystem that involves all the key stakeholders in order to implement micro-credential successfully. Because we cannot implement micro-credential in isolation. For example, we cannot just implement micro-credential at the institution level, at the university, for example. But we need to involve other key stakeholders, the government, the authorities, the accreditation agencies, the industry, the employers, everyone. So these are the, the key stakeholders that really need to be involved. So that is a challenge, one of the challenges at the top level. If we look at, if we look at micro-credential, um, you know, from the drone view or from the bird's eye view, that's probably the first thing that we need to look at, the big picture, the whole ecosystem. Then the next level would be at the institutional level. Okay. Then at the uh, program level, as well as that at the individual level. So there, there's the different levels of where these uh, challenges exist and we need to look at it and see how we can address those challenges. So that will lead us to great opportunities in micro credential. It's really to me a game changer. And I hope I can convince you at the end of this presentation after we look at all the challenges and maybe we look at uh, very quickly on what are the great opportunities waiting us on micro credential. Now, let me dive in straight <laughs> because we are interested to, to learn about the obstacle and the challenges of implementing micro credential. The first challenge would be is the understanding of micro credential itself, a clear understanding of the philosophy and the conceptual understanding of micro credential. And I think by and large, micro credential is still a barely known or foggy term. So I borrowed this from, from the document just now. Yeah. Uh, this is actually one of the challenges. The understanding by all the stakeholders and all the people that are involved to, to implement micro credential. And still, I get questions, and maybe I will get the same questions uh, later on. There's a still a confusion between what is and what is micro credential because we started uh, a few years ago around 2000. 13, 2014, when we, when we roll out our Malaysia MOOC. And MOOC is still there. And in USM, we are still championing and pushing the MOOC agenda. But micro credential now is so called a new kid on the block. Okay. But there's still a bit of confusion what is MOOC and what is micro credential. Uh, to me, is two of a kind. You know, they, are, they have many similarities. Um, and only as a very subtle difference in terms of the structure and how we deliver uh, the structure and the content for MOOC and also for micro-credential. And another big difference is MOOC should always be and forever free, whereas micro-credential is basically aim more, you know, uh, to, to be a, a paid program that you have to pay uh, to uh, follow the program. So that's the first challenge, the understanding of micro-credential. Um, <clears throat> I think everyone who are interested to embark on micro-credential should really understand and read everything they can to understand about micro-credential. Um, 
for a quick reference, you go just go to my YouTube channel. Okay, I have many uh, videos on on uh, on micro credential, and you can just watch the video if you want to learn more about what is the meaning of micro credential. Although I'm going to explain more now before we go on and talk about the uh, further uh, obstacle and challenges to implement micro credential. So to put it simply. If you want to understand micro credential, maybe we look at the uh, the difference between macro credential and micro credential. We are very familiar with macro credential, our formal education uh, system. For example, when the student enroll into the program in, in the university, they will follow the program for four years, eight semesters, at the end of it. 120 credits done, they will get a, a degree or it could be a diploma. So that degree or a diploma is a form of credential. But since it is quite, you know, uh, it, one, it takes about 120 credits before they can get that degree or diploma. So we call it macro credential. 120 credits is large, it's big and take four years, okay? Time-based kind of program. On the other hand, if I take one small module, let's say I pay 50 ringgit and I follow this two hours module, online module, how to make a strawberry jam on my phone at my own time, at my own pace, very flexible, I have total control. And at the end of it, I just com I just complete the assignment. Maybe in this case, a project to to prepare the strawberry jam. I submit my assignment, and then I pass. I will get some form of recognition or evidence of my competency here in the form of a digital badge. And in this digital badge, which is an electronic file, basically, it will contain all the metadata, everything that. Uh, need to be, uh, you know, uh, need to be included to show my skill that I have acquired everything about this particular module which I have completed. And in this case, it is two hour course, two hours course, and maybe another two hours mini project, about four hours. It's a very short, and yet I have achieved certain competency, and I have proven that I have acquired and mastered mastered that competency. So since it's only about four hours to complete, this is what we call micro-credential. So the digital badge is a form of credential. A diploma or a degree is also a form of credential. A certificate is also a form of credential. So that's in, in, the, in a nutshell, in the essence, what micro-credential is about. Small module, small content and small assessment and small credential, okay? So, so a digital badge, basically just like a diploma or a degree, a form of credential as a recognition of, you know, uh, knowledge, skill, competency, proficiency, and also achievement. So therefore, micro-credential in a nutshell I try to make it very simple. A representation of a person's participation, progression, completion, or demonstration of a given competency. It is a competency-based rather than a time-based, meaning that the student has, the learner has a total control when, where, how they want to take the course, they want to take the micro-credential program. They have the full freedom, total control, to determine their learning path, yeah? So that's a big difference between the time-based program. If you, if the student enroll in a four-year program, they have to stay in the system for eight semesters, collect 120 credits. If they quit halfway, they end up with nothing. So it's all or nothing. Compare that with a micro-credential program where, you know, the learner can take the module uh, in, in, you know, uh, at their own pace, and then 
uh, it is a very flexible. Micro credential is about uh, making education very, very flexible. So think of micro credential as a micro certification in a specific area of study. We can design micro credential program as a knowledge based or a skill based program or a combination of both. So we can call it a hybrid, a hybrid or a blended uh, program. It is very flexible. So if you think about fluid curriculum for, for, for the academic program, micro credential is, I would say, the enabler or the instrument that we can use to design a very fluid curriculum because it's a modular, okay? And you can, it's easier to update a module compared to updating the whole curriculum. And this is the definition from the uh, MQA guideline. Uh, Micro-credential is basically a digital certification. <coughs> it's a competency-based, assess knowledge, skill, and competencies <coughs> in a specific area of field from accredited program, or it can be also a standalone freestanding program. And it could be also non-academic pro uh, program for upskilling and also for reskilling program, or also for lifelong learning uh, program for personal uh, development. So we can use micro-credential for uh, basically almost uh, any kind of uh, program. And these are some of the features of micro-credential. It is designed to be flexible. That's the strength of micro-credential. It's based on learning on demand, just in time, just enough, and just for me. Just for me means we can personalize it to suit you know, uh, the, 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 individ the individual learner, okay? So, so that the, the, the learner can design their own learning path, okay? And make it very, very uh, flexible. It is competency-based as opposed to competent, uh, as opposed to, uh, to time-based, based on the mastery learning uh, concept of mastery learning, meaning that uh, a learner has to prove that they have acquired and master that particular skill or that particular uh, concept. And this could be based on, you know, uh, a project or problem-based kind of uh, case study and, and so on, yeah? So it's competency-based. And the content is designed in such a way to be delivered in a bite size or in a small chunk uh, using the concept of micro-learning. And this is to address also the short uh, attention span of the average adult learners uh, nowadays. And then upon completion and upon demonstration of the competency, the learner will get a digital badge. This is a form of uh, credential, a form of recognition to show that learner has completed and successfully demonstrated the, that particular uh, outcome that has been set out for that uh, program for that course or for that module. And then the best part is because of the flexibility, the learner can uh, collect the digital badges and you know accumulate them <coughs> and then bundle them together, stack them together to get a formal uh, full qualification. It could be an advanced certificate, it could be a full diploma, or it could be also a degree or a higher degree like masters and, and so on. So that's, ladies and gentlemen, the features of micro credential. And that's the first challenge I mentioned just now. A crystal clear understanding of the philosophy and the concept of micro credential before you even think about embarking on this program. Otherwise you will be doing things, you know, uh, not with proper understanding, like shooting the bullets uh, in the dark, yeah? And this is a summary. Uh, I, will, I, will, I will not read this, but basically the same thing that I mentioned just now. Uh, by the way, I will give the link at the end of my presentation for you to have the whole set of the slide, okay? And I mentioned that um, micro-credential is based on competency-based education, which uh, which is um, redefine the function of credit, which we are familiar with. A credit 
which is uh, defined as a base of as a measure of time, sit time we call it. You know how long they sit in the program, four years. But moving it moving towards a measure of skill mastery, competency based. And um, basically, uh, the 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 learners can come from uh, can be part of the organization. For example, a working adult. Okay, they can be. Uh, you know, on their own. But if the individual, let's say, micro credential is mainly designed to target people outside our formal education system. That's another thing that we have to keep in mind. We are target. We are targeting those seventy percent of people that could not make it to the university to higher education through UPU. So they go out and work. So we are targeting them. We are targeting those people uh, who has. Who doesn't have yet a degree, but they want, they still want to have a degree. So we are bridging, you know, from the informal or formal, uh, informal or non formal learning to a formal uh, learning, uh, formal education. So um, they will take the micro credential program offered by various training providers. They will do all the necessary things, they will demonstrate the, their skill. And then they will get a digital badge, which is, uh, you know, of course, there will be a certain standard to be achieved uh, in order for them to get the, the digital badge. So basically, that's how the things uh, happen in the micro credential uh, program design. So this is an example of the digital badge where we can put all the information necess necessary in the, in the badge. And for authentication, we can use a blockchain uh, technology. Uh, to uh, to authenticate the, the the digital batch so that you know we are not worried about whether it's a fake digital batch or not and then the student or the learner can display all the digital badges on their uh, dashboard or on their e portfolio e portfolio this example of a module small module uh, probably about uh, in this case 2 hours about 3 hours 14 lesson you know, the module is designed to be standalone, although it can be part of a bigger course or a bigger program. You know, we can map the the outcome of the module to be uh, to be aligned with the the whole course or the whole program. Okay, but usually we can offer the module as a standalone freestanding uh, module because not everyone interested to take the whole package. Maybe they are interested only to take one or two module only. Therefore, it's very important to design the module to be standalone or freestanding. The, the content will give value to the student. Let's say they spend two hours, four hours, and they pay 45 ringgit. In this case, they will get a value out of it. Okay, So the content should be the uh, substantive, or offer high value, very focused to a particular skill or to, to a particular uh, concept. And the duration is usually between one to four hours. And that module just now can be part of the bigger package. So in this case, there are six, uh, just for example here, uh, six module in the whole package. So if the learner take all the six module, they will get six digital badges and they will get at the end one full certificate in online marketing and business, for example. Okay, And this uh, example on Skillshare, where you can see the course is designed as a short uh, online module, two hours, one hour, half an hour. Yeah? So this is how the concept of micro-credential is translated into the actual delivery of the program. If you look at um, a platform like FutureLearn, yeah? so this is what they say about micro-credential. Micro-credential and programs allow you to pursue further study in a specialized field created or accredited by leading universities, micro-credential or professional credentials designed for you to build in-demand career skill. Remember, learning on demand, just in time, just in case, just for me, Yeah, very personalized. Programs allow you to deepen your understanding of a subject. So someone is, let's say, someone working full time, uh, it, they can probably have a degree as well, but uh, they want to take some modules uh, 
uh, to for their upskilling or even for reskilling. So uh, deepen the understanding of a subject or to complement their uh, skill on certain areas with the opportunity to earn a professional or academic credential. Okay. And what is a micro-credential? Micro-credential are designed to upskill you for work in rapidly growing industries without the time and cost commitment of a full degree. That's where the flexibility. Your micro-credential can stand alone as an independent credential and some also offer credit to use towards a degree. So learn online with expert instructors, complete online courses led by experts over 12 to 16 weeks with a dedicated group of professionals. Then complete a project-based assessment. Then you can earn a professional credential and then advance your career further. This example that you can see, yeah, uh, the different program here. All right, so we are done with the first challenge. Okay, then basically, this is to me the most important part of my presentation is for those who are not familiar yet with the concept of micro credential, I hope. Uh, I have given you some ideas of what micro-credential is and how it can fit in into your current, uh, you know, program or maybe future uh, plan that you can embark. The second challenge is lack of strategic direction and to get a buy-in. Here is more at the institutional level, at the university level, at the college level, yeah? So this is where the top management has to play their role, okay? The top management and also the middle, so-called the middle management, the deans, the head of department, they have to really have a clear direction. They have a clear understanding, then they have a clear strategic direction what they want to achieve with micro credential they cannot just jump into the water and hope to do and get something done and achieve something meaningful and then to get a buy-in of the people who want to you know uh, be part of the micro credential implementation and success so for for at the institutional at the institutional level uh they have to understand what are the opportunities. So the, here we are talking about opportunities as well, the prospect and the opportunities. So I just read very quickly here, uh, micro-credential program, as I mentioned earlier, is a game changer. You know, uh, you have to look at what's needed outside, outside the, the, the university, what are the demand out there, understand where skill gap exists and how to solve them, provide rapid Micro-credential pro program can provide rapid insight into ongoing professional development. Uh, you can work with the HRBF and various agencies out there. Build a culture of continuous learning. You know, lifelong learning is one of the nation's uh, agenda. But how do we do that? How do we uh, make it happen? I can see micro-credential is one of the instruments that we can use. Become inspired to speak new skills. Who's Engagement and productivity. IBM has shown when they launched the micro credential program, they managed to boost the productivity, uh, you know, um, significantly. And then uh, the, the credential in the form of digital badge from micro credential program are portable and shareable. It can, you know, the, the learner can take anywhere, uh, but of course, it will take time for, for this to happen. But that's what uh, one of the challenges uh, in the future of micro-credential, which I will mention uh, later. So uh, in terms of uh, the institutional, institutional strategic uh, level, start with the end in mind, the strategic intent or the big picture. You know, the roadmap has to be laid out very clearly. Uh, then they decide what kind of program they want to start with. And then who are the target groups out there? They want, they want to uh, target and who are the partners that it can work together because having a partner, especially a highly reputable partner will add to the credibility of your micro-credential program. And also the readiness. Are we ready to embark on micro-credential or not? That's a 
naturally the question that should be asked by the top management. And then uh, in terms of the target group, you know, these are the four target group that the, the, the anyone who want to embark on micro credential should be you know, looking at. Um, okay, so this is what, call, what we call non-traditional students. Micro credential is mainly designed for them, non-traditional students. Not so much for our full-time student, although once we have developed the micro credential, we can use also those micro credential to complement our uh, blended learning uh, program. Okay, so the school leavers pursuing formal qualification, people require upskilling, people require reskilling, and lifelong and life wide learners. And these are the four target group where the opportunities are waiting for us to develop the program. So, okay, now uh, at the management level, this is what we should start look at, looking at, you know, what kind of program that we want to start, whether it's professional development program, personal development program, or postgraduate program, or undergraduate program, looking at the impact and the effort that we have to put in, the high impact, uh, with the low effort, low effort, with the high impact and, and, and so on. So I put it in the quadrant here, just to give you the basic idea of how do you want to go about and this, decide what kind of uh, program that you want to uh, start with and roll out uh, first. And some of the critical success factors here. And these are also the challenges. If you don't have this kind of structure or governance structure uh, at the institutional level, then it's very hard to, uh, you know, to get things moving. So this is an example of USM, where we have the committee of micro credential chat by the vice chancellor, and we have the workhorse. Uh, so my center CDA is the workhorse, and we are working with the satellites. Our satellite means these are the different centers, different PTGs that are helping us working together to push, uh, to move the micro credential. Of course, the people, the committed subject matter expert, you need also to have the business model and people who will put, do the marketing as well, okay? And these are some of the critical requirements uh, in order to uh, roll out uh, any micro-credential program, for example, established platform. You need to have a platform, whether you want to create your own, which I would not advise. <laughs> the reason why, because it's so much work. So in, in USM, you are using open learning. So after this presentation, uh, you will have a workshop by Open Learning. I would strongly recommend you to attend that workshop. Don't miss the opportunity. So in USM, you are using Open Learning. Uh, I'm not an ambassador for Open Learning, uh, but I just want to say that we have been working with Open Learning since MOOC and we are happy. Uh, and now we focus on content development, okay? Rather than worrying about the technical aspect and so on. So you need to have a technical team, committed coordinator. This is very, very important training and application to support our staff, the software and so on for them to develop content. Yeah? And of course, the unwavering support from the boss, from the head of department, without which it's not going to happen. Believe me, trust me, okay? Uh, we have started developing our micro-credential in USM now uh, uh, in a pipeline, we have what, 300. And we are going to roll out only the first batch only early next month. Can you imagine that? It takes a long time before we are able to roll out uh, the micro-credential. Because the challenge is all this governance, restructure, the people, those are the challenges. We are talking about challenges here. The third challenge will be uh, this is the most important part as well. Mindset, skill set, tool set. The people, the mindset of our own people in order to get the buy-in from them. Because as we know, the academics, they have so much on their plate. You know, there's no more space on their plate. That's what they say, okay? There's no more space 
on our plate and what's now you want, you want us to do micro credential come on you know we have only 24 hours uh, a day well i'm not going to tell you how but that's a, the change of mindset the buy in and, you know, the uh, commitment you you truly believe that is something uh, that we need to do for the university for the nation you know um, then after the mindset is okay then you need to provide the skill set so that's, that's where the training comes in that's where the workshop like open learning just you know uh, after this one will help you to get the required skill set so that you can develop the content develop the course according to you know the best practices and so on and of course you need a tool set you need a, a toolbox with a set of tools that would help you to develop your program your content and so on successfully so content design and delivery to me one of the great challenges was, uh, was obstacle if you so to speak you know uh, the assessment you know to do online assessment to you know um, design uh, a project a case study and, and so on then the question of integrity how do you know the student himself or herself did the work did the project if you ask me the question for in this session i'm not going to uh, give you a definite answer there is no clear answer for that <laughs> so let me let me uh, 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 just tell you the, the question of integrity you know, cheating and, and so on there's hard question to answer given the situation the technology that we have the limitation is still there okay so there's a third challenge uh, the fourth challenge yes um, what if a technical we have a technical based program you know some you know a program that requires lab requires hands on practical yes that kind of program probably uh, we cannot deliver fully online fully in a micro credential maybe we need to do uh, a hybrid or blended type where the the lab or the practical part need to be you know face to face hands on to some extent, we can use the virtual reality and, and so on, but there's still a limitation there with the technology and so on. So if you are thinking about um, doing a micro credential program for a technical based uh, program or vocational type uh, program, hands on, then the theory part, yeah, the, 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 the theory part, the knowledge base, the knowledge part can be delivered online, micro credential, but the practical part, you have to find ways to do it on site, hands on, face to face. Okay, on to, yeah, because uh, micro credential actually can be, uh, the micro credential program can be done for the hard skill, you know, uh, programming and so on. Those can be done uh, online, but some will require uh, really a real hands on because it's critical skill that. You want to make sure that they get the, the master the skill correctly and properly. Um, the soft skill kind of program probably a good candidates, yeah, good candidates for micro credential fully online. This can be delivered delivered fully online program. For the hard skill, probably some can be delivered fully online. Some probably in the form of uh, blended or hybrid. Okay, the fifth challenge is creating a portable and seamless credit transfer framework. This is actually at the top level. I would say at the national level. And we are still at the very, very uh, early days of micro credential program. So don't worry so much about this, you know, whether the employer would recognize whether, you know, so sometimes we are thinking too far, too big, which is good. But to me, um, while it's good to think about all these challenges, all these kind of uh, possible issues that will arise, which beyond our control to some extent, then we, we might as well focus on what we can control first. Our 
you know, at the department level, at the institutional level. Let's do it first while the ecosystem changing slowly. There are issues, of course, in terms of portability, meaning that let's say a module and a digital badge issued by USM would it be recognized by UUM and vice versa. Or a digital badge issued by a program by Bank Negara, Malaysia, would it be recognized by, let's say, Petronas? So I just had a forum last week uh, organized by Bank Negara, Malaysia and Petronas. We are, we are talking about the portability of these digital badges. And it is actually related to the credit transfer as well. Although for academic program, now we have MQA, well done MQA, uh, they have the guideline now and also the credit transfer framework in the form of FLC, FLA for the admission, FLC for the credit transfer. Now we have FLQ and God knows or what kind of FL will, will be coming up soon. But uh, when, we, when we were discussing about the micro-credential guideline, we are looking also the idea uh, of creating a national credit bank. So that's to me in the future where we can create a really portable and seamless credit transfer framework involving all the key stakeholders. And that, so these are the, the, the existing micro credential kind of uh, for the academic program, but it's limited to academic program. What about the upskilling program offered by the corporate industry and, and so on? and all the like uh, private training providers. How can we consolidate this into a national framework by having the so-called National Credit Bank? That's, ladies and gentlemen, will be the future. And I hope the future is just around the corner, okay? And uh, finally, uh, I would say that um, what we need when we want to create uh, a national framework is in you know soon we will be able to bridge the formal education and the informal non-formal education macro credential and micro credential and micro credential program that is designed in such a way that any learners can can uh, you know take their own learning path and which finally would end up or would lead, would lead to the formal qualification which is a macro credential and we have the framework uh, like FLA and FLC. And finally, the final uh, challenges and obstacle uh, of micro-credential implementation is recognition, as I mentioned earlier. Recognition by the stakeholders. You are talking about, uh, you know, the seamless, uh, seamless transferability and portability of the credit or the digital badge from one entity to another entity. So, uh, we, what we need now to, is to have uh, an ecosystem where all the major players and the major stakeholders agree to agree on a certain framework. So that's where the idea of National Credit Bank, just like Bank Negara Malaysia, that control all the, you know, the bank uh, as an authority that control all the uh, financial uh, institution in Malaysia. And the same thing, National Credit Bank uh, would be the controller of all the credit transfer for the micro credential. And to sum up the six challenges, micro credential, still a barely known uh, term. There's still a confusion sometime between MOOC and micro credential. Uh, I have two presentations on my YouTube channel if you want to learn more about What's the difference between MOOC and micro credential? Feel free to, you know, uh, hit to my, um, go to my channel and learn more. Lack of strategic direction, the big picture, and the challenge to get the buy in from people. Mindset, skill set, tool set, content design and delivery, technical based program that requires hands on, creating a seamless credit transfer framework, recognition by stakeholders. And six key points to take away today, ladies and gentlemen. Micro credential empower learners to assemble their own personal learning ecologies to support their individual learning pathways. Second, before developing micro credential, if you are the course developer, but before you become one, <laughs> get the first hand experience first. 
be a learner. To me, if you have not taken any online course as a learner, then you are not qualified yet to teach online. When designing my credential, always think about the value proposition. If you are selling your course for 100 ringgit, what is the value that I will get out of that 100 ringgit? It must be a compelling value, yeah? Great value, create compelling values. Build a sustainable capacity. So at the institutional level, at the faculty level, at the department level, you have to build the capacity. You know, so the subject matter expert, the support, the technical support, the equipment, the RCT infrastructure. Investment is important here. Okay, the upfront investment is important. If you don't invest, then we, you cannot hope to achieve anything meaningful, impactful. If you don't, if you're not willing to put some investment, work with credible partner, and then create an ecosystem involving key stakeholders for a successful implementation of my credential program. And with that, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, my dear colleagues, for listening to this, uh, my rambling on my credential again. And this one slide that you want to take a picture because there's uh, a link where you can uh, download the whole set of slides that you have seen in my presentation here. And I'm giving a permission for you to use a slide, recycle, modify, remix, whatever that you like to do, uh, permission granted. And all I need from you is doa for me to stay healthy and to continue create content and share, sharing with the public. So with that, uh, thank you so much. Thank you, the sec uh, Prof. Alzia and IUCL Secretariat again for inviting me and um, for sharing this topic, my credential with the with the audience. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof, for the presentation and the sharing of the keynote on micro-credential obstacles and challenges of developing digital community. So if anyone has any questions, I'm sure, I'm sure that um, our beloved Prof will be pleased to answer them. Okay, let, let me pick up some of the questions I can see in the, on the chat oh, yes. here, Tony, yeah? I can yes, see, please. okay, uh, uh, from, from, the, from the bottom. Uh, Sarah asked me a question. Can I have the name linked to uh, my YouTube channel? You just go to YouTube and just uh, search my name, uh, ABD, yeah? Abdul Karim ABD, uh, Abdul Karim alias, then you will find my channel. And uh, yeah, feel free to, to subscribe my channel because I... I upload new new content every month, if not every week. Uh, okay. Um, okay. I don't see any question, any more question in the chat. So feel free to to ask me directly. Perhaps uh, if the organizer allow that. I think we have another question, Prof. Where? Yes, um, yes, from Dr. Arma okay, okay. in the chat box, yes. What is your opinion if we work with the existing professional body and collaborate to convert their certificate content to map with our postgraduate program? Very good question. That's what I mentioned just now. I would say the best approach, if you want to embark on micro-credential, don't work alone. And don't be greedy. <laughs> don't work alone. Don't walk alone. Don't walk alone the journey of micro credential alone. Uh, find the partner. In fact, uh, in micro credential guideline, uh, you see the table, kan? the table. Uh, uh, we we encourage actually the consortium model. Uh, in fact, USM has uh, joined uh, kind of consortium as well. Um, maybe soon, I think this, this will be, I, I'm not sure whether, whether UUM is there. Uh, so we, we, we encourage the universities to work together as a consortium and work together to develop a certain program, especially the academic program, because let's say UUM has a Bachelor of Management, 
USM also offer Bachelor of Management. Let's say UM also has Bachelor of Management. And this program is based on the same program standard. Right? So, therefore, um, we can, the, the universities or the members of the consortium can pakat pakat, you know, can work, can, can agree to work together. Okay, USM, you develop 20 uh, credits. UUM, you develop 20 credits. UM, you develop 20 credits. And based on the expertise that you have. So, can you imagine that one full program, 120 credits, can be developed probably in a very short time because you have, let's say, five partners working together and, you know, uh, share the, the development part. And the same thing with certain uh, organization or certain association, professional body, and so on. If you can identify and then agree to work together, then you map the content so that it will map to uh, a certain program at the university. That will be best. That will be ideal. And of course, you can offer that as a standalone CPD or upskilling or reskilling program as well. So I hope that answer Dr. Arpa, uh, Dr. Arpa's uh, question. The answer is big yes. We are encouraged. We encourage you very much. And uh, yeah, I can see another question from Dr. Rami here. Mm. A higher academic institution only the ones who are able to offer micro credential program. No, not necessarily. Uh, but again. It's best if the, the 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 higher academic institution or the HP we call it higher educational providers we call it in the, in the guideline we call it HEP. Yeah? It's best to work together with the uh, uh, other agencies or training providers, even private training providers. Uh, in, including those like HRDF and, and so on. In fact, HRDF is moving towards uh, micro-credential program. After this webinar, I will have a meeting <laughs> with, uh, uh, I'm now as part of the panel uh, in HRDF. So they are moving towards that direction. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you all, uh, micro-credential program is a low hanging fruits, low lying fruits up for grab. It's a game changer and the huge opportunities there. Although my focus, the focus of my presentation today, this morning, is about challenges, obstacle, but which is good to understand, but the opportunities are abound. There's a bounty of opportunities out there to be grabbed. Yeah? So work together with, um, with the non-economic uh, institution as well. Right, uh, let me pick up Putri Sophia question here. From your experience, what are the USPs to make universities uh, MC stand out as compared to the certificate issued by the industry? USP, unique selling, uh, unique selling points, isn't it? Yeah, value proposition that I mentioned just now. So what are the unique selling proposition? USP to make universities micro credentials stand out as compared to the certificate issued by the industry. <laughs> I don't have a definite answer for that because the answer actually is with the university. Uh, what is your strength? What is uh, something uh, very unique, very special that you can offer as a great value? It's all about the value. That's a value proposition, right? A selling proposition. So what is the great value that you can offer to industry to fill up the skill gap? To fill up the skill gap, for example. So we have to identify the skill gap. So your institution must have the, your, your own market intelligence team to study what's, what are the skill gap out there. Because remember, micro-credential program is not designed for so much for our own student, no. Although it can be used for that. But we are looking at how we can serve those skills required, upskilling and so on in the industry and so on. So 
you need to identify first what are the skill gap and see how you can come in with your program to fill in or to fill up the skill gap. If you Google training industry magazine, Google training industry magazine, the latest issue which you can download free the whole magazine, the, the whole issue May, June 2021, is all about skill gaps. Read that, all the articles in that magazine. That will give you a lot of ideas how you want to approach your micro-credential program. Once again, Google Training Industry Magazine. Download the latest issue, May, June. The whole magazine, the theme is about skill gaps. And they talk also about micro-credential as well. All right? Uh, Faradina, Dr. Faradina, how are you? <laughs> Creating MC program is quite taxing. Ooh, agree. And requires lots of financial investment. Agree. And I know that your VC, UMVC has put 1 million. Wow, that's very generous, man. Thus, there is a perspective that MC is for income generation rather than lifelong learning. What do you think about this perspective? Yeah. Um, yeah. Micro credential can serve for lifelong learning, for personal development, as well as for professional development. And that's where the income generation can come in. I think we do not, uh, MOOC, for example, is still there. So MOOC, we can continue with MOOC so that we can champion the SDG4, inclusive education, access to education, free. That is MOOC. And that's why USM is still pushing MOOC very hard. If you see on our USM MOOC platform, we have more and more MOOC every year. We don't stop. That's for free. But it's not actually sustainable, you know. To create MOOC is also expensive. So we need to, to have something that is sustainable and also help the university, especially for financial sustainability. We need to survive as well. So... But rather than, because we need money, university need money, and rather than university embark on, on doing something business or something not related to education, I would rather university embark on micro-credential, which is still under the umbrella of education, but approach it with a business mindset. And at the same time, it can still serve for the lifelong learning. And remember, we still have MOOC to complement that. So I'm not worried about the mindset of income generation and so on. I think we can achieve uh, that as well as serving the education, uh, the ideal of education at the same time. Yeah. I hope, Dr. Dina, uh, I have addressed that, that question to your satisfaction. Uh, of course, there is still kind of uh, a lot of things can be can be can be deliberated on that, can be discussed. We can agree to agree and agree to disagree, disagree as well. Okay, from Dr. Shamsul here, any example, success story of micro-credential you can briefly tell us? Uh, yeah, there are a few from US especially, but in Malaysia, I hope, <laughs> I hope USM will, will, be, will have the first success story. Uh, we are going to launch, uh, to roll out our first uh, seven module uh, early next month, after two years. And this is actually a nursing module, seven module. Our target group is very clear. We are targeting 100,000 plus nurses all over Malaysia. And um, they have to take a CPD point. So we, we, have got, uh, ah, uh, we, we have got the endorsement from Institute Jururawat Malaysia that support this program, which allow the nurses now to take uh, at least some of the CPD point from our micro-credential online uh, program. So that will hopefully will be the first success story uh, as far as USM is concerned. And yesterday, uh, no, day before, two days ago, uh, our Senate has just approved the first full-fledged micro-credential program, which is, our bachelor, which is our Bachelor of Management. And hopefully soon we will assign uh, MOA with big industry 
So this program is actually designed with the industry in mind. And hopefully that will be another showcase and another success story very soon. Okay, so. Uh, Recording in progress. Dr. Zahir here. Uh, Dr. Zahiruddin, how are you? There are several approaches available to do MC. European do it differently than the Australian. Which model is better? Well, I think I'm not in the position to, to say which, which model is, is better. Um, I think all the models have the, the different facets and different kind of uh, pros and cons as well. Uh, I think we can learn from those and maybe we can pick up the, the good things from the different models and blend them together and we can use that for our own, yeah? I think, I think Malaysians are very good at looking at what other people are doing and then take the best practices, put it in, the, in our own pot, blend it and use it for our own. So I think let's do that, yeah? Uh, all right. Um, Has another one from yeah uh, from Ayusel Men Hall yes. from YouTube Live. Uh, yes. Salam, welcome, Salam. Could you elaborate further on work with credible partner? Takeaway point: Would it be industry, domain expert, stakeholders, or academic researcher? Uh, credible partner, I would say, uh, yeah, it could it could be from from uh, from industry, credible industry uh, association. For example, uh, let's say uh, Persatuan Doctor-Doctor uh, Malaysia, Persatuan Engineer, or Majlis. Uh, uh, could be a council, could be association, could be a society, uh, it could be a professional organization. Uh, those especially that have good reputation. If you see how these, those... Um, Universities on Coursera, especially if you go to Coursera, um, maybe also on Future Learn, yeah, Dr. Zahira will know this. Those that are offering a micro credential program, they always have a partner. And this partner can be a specific industry or, in most cases, an association or organization. And they are the credible, the credible one. So when you work with a credible partner, uh, let's say MIT. MIT is already well known. They do not have actually another credible partner. But yet, if you see their program, they also work with partner like Google and so on. So why, by doing that, it serves a few things, a few purposes. One is to even add value and credibility to the program. And that will attract more people to take the program. Look at some of the program on Udacity platform. Who are the partner? Google, IBM, Facebook. <laughs> yeah, go to Udacity and check. So I think that is the, the thing that I, what I mean by working with a credible partner to add value and to add credibility to your program. USM can stand alone, I, I would say. UM can stand alone to offer the program. We have that brand, but then it's, why not if you can work together with UM? UUM is also is already there, right? So, <laughs> no pun intended, but I'm I'm uh, sincere. I'm very honest in this, right? Uh, another one here, yeah, Dr. Marwan. Mod uh, campuran boleh tak multidisiplin dan skill untuk jadikan ijazah SM. I'm not sure what is SM. Mod campuran boleh tak multidisiplin dan skill untuk jadikan ijazah. Actually, anything is possible. Because of the nature of the micro-credential is modular. So it's kind of, you know, you take this module from here, another module from here, as long as they can fit in together and they can, you know, they can, uh, they can be assembled into a proper program or you can align to a certain uh, academic program, uh, program outcome. So it can be done, you know. So it's all about the how creative you are in, in approaching 
the the program based on the demand, based on the capacity that you have. Micro credential provide that flexibility. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, how do you? Okay. There's another question. How do we ensure that the content we develop is up to date and reliable? How do we ensure? Of course, the course developer or the program developer will ensure that. And that's the beauty of micro credential because it is modular. Can you imagine if the whole program 120 credit when you when you um, unpack and unbundle the the whole content of the curriculum into a small module? It is easier to update a small module compared to update the full 14 weeks course or the full program, right? That's the beauty of modular. And the concept of modular is not new. It's since you know since the early days of industrial revolution. The engine is designed to be modular so that you can change or substitute the, the, the different parts easily without affecting another part. That's the concept of modular. The same concept. When we design our curriculum with micro credential approach in mind, you know, you can put in things easily, just like putting the Lego pieces together. As long as the, all the Lego pieces fit together nicely to form whatever shape that you want. And that shape is your program outcome or the course learning outcome. I, you know, I'm, I'm a science, uh, you know, with science uh, people always look at things metaphorically so that easy to understand. So the way I see things, you know, like program outcome and so on, it's just like uh, putting Lego pieces together. As long as you put them together nicely and you get the right shape, which is your program outcome or the learning outcome. Mapping, uh, education people use a term like mapping, aligning, constructive alignment, and so on. Uh, people like me looking at it in a simpler way, uh, just basically putting things together, you know, assemble them. So you can unpack the whole curriculum then put them together to fit in again, okay? All right. Adakah khusus-khusus in Dr. Haji, Dr. Ahmad Nasir? Oh, Dr. Ahmad Nasir from UPM. Uh, lama tak jumpa. Adakah khusus-khusus yang ada dalam MOOC sekarang boleh dijadikan sebagai micro credential dan impact kepada pelajar? Yes. MOOC can be kind of redesigned to become a micro credential module. One MOOC, let's say, eight weeks MOOC or four weeks MOOCs. Look at the content. Now you can break it down into a small uh, modular, mod smaller module. Offer that as a standalone module. Uh, can be done. Can be done. So in fact, in USM, our approach is we encourage our staff to start with MOOC so that we still have MOOC. And from there, after they have several MOOCs, they can take any of the MOOCs and then uh, create micro-credential program from there. So that now we have MOOC and micro-credential running together, moving together, hand in hand. They complement each other. Uh, Dr. Agni, can you help me to pick up any, to pick any question that I missed? <laughs> Yes, we have um, another question, Paul, from Dr. Suja from the YouTube Live. Does micro credential need to be online learning? Oh, the, uh, I think I mentioned uh, not necessarily. Not necessarily. If the program, uh, remember, I have a slide where I show the kind of skill that we can deliver through micro credential program, the hard skill and the soft skill. Uh, I know some people don't like to use the term soft skill, including me. Yeah. But um, those hard skills, some programs require hands-on or practical lab-based uh, working on the field and, and so on. That might not be, uh, that probably you cannot deliver 100% online. But the knowledge or the theory part, you can do online. The practical part, you can do uh, on-site or face-to-face -face in the lab and so on. But any program, especially the so-called soft skill type, you know, you teach critical thinking, teach uh, 
history, for example, maybe. I'm not saying that history is soft skill, but it's knowledge based, content based. Yeah, that's the word, content based. That probably can be delivered uh, fully online, whether uh, fully asynchronous, fully asynchronous, <laughs> or blended as well. Okay. All right. <coughs> much prof i think that's all the questions now all right so yeah so thank you very much for for all the for the, all the questions uh, i'm sorry if i'm not very happy because uh, i'm a bit struggling today because of not feeling 100 uh, percent this morning but i'm uh, I've, I've tried my best to give you to deliver this to this topic um so for those who still like 50 50 whether you want to embark on micro-credential or not. If you're still not very clear about micro-credential, I hope I have made it clear a little bit, if not crystal clear. And I hope um, from all those challenges and some opportunities with that, which I have uh, uh, shared and presented to you, you will feel very motivated to embark on micro Credential. And I must say that everyone should try or must try to embark on micro credential is to me no longer an option. Online learning, online education is no longer an option. And this is where you can reach out, take your knowledge, your skill, your expertise outside the physical boundary of your classroom, the physical boundary of your campus. You can teach the world and help the university as well at the same time for financial sustainability. So with that, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Arne. Thank you everyone who asked the question and for bearing with me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof, for the fruitful session just now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we will have a 15 minutes break and we will reconvene at Open Learning Consultation Room to begin our workshop on OpenCred micro-credential course template with Mr. Chandru Balakrishnan, learning designer from Open Learning Malaysia at 10.45 a.m. But before that, let us capture a moment with our beloved prof here together by having a virtual group photo. So everyone, please switch on your video. And please smile. <laughs> Can see familiar faces. Oh, the Taisha is here. I'll talk about Taisha. Hey, stand by. Three, two, one. Smile. Okay, another one. Last one. Three, two, one. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prof. And thank you, everyone. Thank so you, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye, Prof. See you, everyone, at 10.45. Until then, stay tuned.